Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 30th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today had an interesting example of one of the better done phishing emails. Of course, the problem sometimes with phishing exercises or when we are showing phishing messages to users is that they're almost too obvious bad. In his case, well, uh, he actually received a pretty good one that you certainly could fall for. It was one of those package delivery failed messages that uh, didn't have any typos. It looked just like the real thing. And of course, well, like many people, he orders a lot of stuff online. So he did expect some deliveries. It's always good to throw in one of these better emails in order to really get users ready for what they should expect from some of the more sophisticated phishing scams. Encapsulize providing us with an update what's going on with the Mirai botnet these days. Now, Mirai, of course, it's still around, it's still strong. There are still hundreds of thousands of hosts that are in some form connected to one version or the other of these botnets. And in Encapsula's case, one part of that Mirai botnet was used to attack a US college. It's sort of interesting here that they actually used a layer seven attack, which means they used valid HTTP requests. Now, overall, that's not really new for Mirai. Mirai had that capability from the beginning, and we have actually seen some denial of service attacks like this from Internet of Things botnets before they were called uh, Mirai. Sort of different here is that the requests vary quite a bit, making filtering even more difficult. Most of uh, the these simple Internet of Things botnets, if they attacked you, all of them sent the same request. Here, user H and alike keeps changing. And then of course, and that's again typical for these botnets, the geographic distribution is quite diverse, again, making filtering difficult. In this particular case, the botnet sent around 30,000 requests per second and kept the attack up for 54 hours. And Bleeping Computer is reporting about an interesting new adware plugin. Now, uh, this plugin is typically installed in browsers as part of other legit plugins that essentially do get paid in order to include this adware. The adware is in so far a little bit different that it isn't just injecting referral links or banner ads into random websites, but it will also manipulate websites and change support phone numbers. For example, if you're looking up a certain company via Google, you may have observed that for larger companies, you sort of get a special box on the side with the company's information and support phone numbers. Well, uh, this adware will replace the phone number with customer support scam phone numbers. And if you remember this year's Pwn to Own contest, one of the highlights was actually where an attacker was able to break into a system via a browser vulnerability. And that system was running as a virtual machine, but the attacker was able to break out into the host due to a vulnerability in VMware. Well, uh, that vulnerability has been fixed now by VMware. VMware today fixed four different vulnerabilities that have affect VMware ESXi, Fusion, and Workstation. So in particular, if you're using VMware for malware analysis and such, you definitely should update as soon as possible. And just like many OS X users forget that Microsoft updates often apply to them if they are running, for example, Microsoft Office on OS X. Same is true for Windows users. Uh, earlier this week, we had a big update from Apple for pretty much everything. And uh, one little piece that sort of got a little bit lost there is it also included an update for 
iCloud for Windows. There are only about five different vulnerabilities that are being addressed here, but at least one of them can be used for arbitrary code execution. And then there's also a certificate handling vulnerability that can at least uh, leak some private information. So don't forget to update iCloud for Windows. And this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.